Buckle up, because this one's going to be a little wild and weird. In this episode, I'm going over some superhero catalogs from the 60s and 70s that feature superhero art, books, puzzles, and more. Here we go. Thanks for checking out the video. My name is Bernie Gonzalez, and in these videos, I'd like to go over some of the comics, movies, toys, art books that influenced me, my artwork, my storytelling. And in this video, I'm going over an oddity, something that I actually haven't discovered until recently, but it was just too neat not to showcase. And I'm talking about the superhero catalog of games, books, toys, and puzzles. It's a mouthful, definitely an oddity. Let me explain. So this is something very unique in the world of comics in that it's not a comic book, but it features A-level characters. Batman, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Batgirl, Superman, Hulk, DC, Marvel. Uh, but that's not all. We also get Star Trek, Space uh, 1999, Sesame Street, and more. So what is this? Uh, well, like the name suggests, it's a catalog. Um, it was released in 1976 by Superhero Enterprise. Got beanbag chairs, alarm clocks, Mego figures, dartboards, uh, Spider-Man web shooters, and you can order them all by just flipping to the back of this comic-sized catalog, marking off what you want and the quantity. They even give you an example here, web shooter. Put in your total. You can get a 10% discount if you over order over 25 bucks. Send it to Dover, New Jersey, and then you patiently wait for your stuff to arrive. So let's kind of flip through some of these. Uh, I just thought it'd be kind of fun to check out the goodies because, again, kind of an oddity, but it's kind of interesting to see all of this stuff in under, uh, under one cover. So you get a bit of an introduction, some of the artists that were included with this, and for what I could find, there are about four or five issues of these catalogs uh, cover price was 50 cents, all full with comics merchandise, but as you can see, it wasn't pictures. It wasn't like a Toys R Us or Sears or Woolworth catalog, if you remember those back in the day. Rather, it's a catalog uh, in comic book format filled with comic book artwork. And who drew the artwork? It was actually students at the famous uh, Joe Kubert School of Comic Art. So let's flip through some of these. Provide a little bit more background on some of this. You can see you got the Batman exploding bridge. You know, probably press this and with air, just makes that explode. Get the Hall of Justice. I think we're talking Mego figures here. And if you remember those, they have kind of like the actual cloth costumes and capes. We've got the web shooter. We've got a Marvel dartboard, $3.95 plus 50 cents shipping. You got Spider-Man on a motorcycle because, you know, of course, looks like the Daily Bugle color forms. If you don't remember those, it was basically uh, this this sheet that was kind of a uh, kind of glossy. And the idea is that you could take the characters and they were sticky, but you could take them off and move them around. So it was like creating your own comic book page uh, so that you can tell your own stories and as a kid it was kind of neat because when you colored a coloring book page that was it there was nothing else to do with it in this you can move the characters around tell the, your stories in your head and if you didn't have figures then that was a, a fun way to kind of use your imagination got some uh, spider-man and captain america drag racing got some games again here's the star trek space 1999 let's see here uh Oh, Viewmaster, if you remember those, you would get these sort of, I don't even know if they were 3D, but the idea is you could put these discs in, and as you put them in, uh, it would, you know, just give you just these really neat views of uh, whatever it was that you bought. In this case, obviously, uh, Star Trek, Space 1999, Shazam, Batman, Superman. Look at all these Mego figures, and again, you don't get pictures of them. Someone actually took the time to probably look at the picture or the packaging and actually draw it. So that's what makes it so unique, so interesting that this was out there and, and people were just picking this stuff up in the late 70s and placing their orders and you weren't 
you, you didn't actually see what this bat cycle looked like. You just have to assume that, yeah, that's what you were buying. The drawing was the thing you were going to get. And I remember seeing some of these. Uh, the you know I think they had the little thing in the back that you could pull and it would get them the little motorcycles to drive and you know they, they weren't great but it was okay but for 198 and I love this look at this penguin Joker they don't even say Batman it just says you know who little uh bat planes they were made out of like this styrofoam and most of the time you know something would break along the way or you'd just be too heavy handed and putting it together and then when you threw it uh, whether there was wind or not inevitably it would break but you know you would try to get your folks to get you another one because they weren't very expensive i think uh these things are called life-size movable hang-ups i think uh, now uh one of the big companies that does this is uh is it fathead and they're just large enough you know the the idea is that they're life-size you could probably put them on a wall and then you know your parents will be happy that you could take them down but again look in what other comic outside of some of the few marvel dc crossovers would you have batman captain america spider-man superman all next to each other and even an ape from planet of the apes love it school supplies so if you want to be the cool kid in school with thor a notebook paper this is where you could get it beyond just the big two we also have star trek communicators enterprise playset phaser a phaser game a Tribble, Sesame Street, Game of Bang Hangman, Bermuda Triangle, some Cracker Jack, Space 1999. Not sure exactly what this is, but it says Spidey Rocks On, Rock Reflections of a su Superhero. Wow. Um, not sure what that is. Maybe it's an actual rock album. Very strange. These decals that you could put on a mirror. So when you are checking out your hair and trying to see if everything's in place, a nice... Well drawn, Jack Kirby, Captain America is looking at right at you. Medallions, buttons, I would imagine incredibly cheap uh, water guns. And obviously if you're Spider-Man, uh, you need some handcuffs. It looks almost like Kang, the Conqueror here, next to Captain America. So they were using all of the, uh, of the main characters and digging into the bench as well. Pillows drinking cups posters a ton of posters i can only imagine that if you were a kid and you could get a dracula lives poster or a mighty marvel comic-con 1975 poster why wouldn't you want this on this wall some of these are just great you actually get a picture of the livingston mall building the superhero shop and and i guess that's where that's a good time to kind of explain the person who was behind a superhero catalog that was Ivan Snyder who in the early 70s he was the head of uh, merchandise licensing at Marvel Comics Group and specifically he worked with mail order so he would have been would have worked on t-shirts hats uh, belts all of this stuff um, but then Marvel ends their mail order business in the mid 70s so Snyder uh, buys the business in 1975 and renames it uh, Superhero Enterprises. Um, and then eventually he adds DC and other well-known licenses. And we get this catalog uh, with calendars. And if I remember right, uh, those were some of the uh, collections, the early collections that were released uh, with introductions by Stan Lee. Son of Origins, Bring on the Bad Guys. And I've seen a few of them out there. And just kind of neat because you get sort of these best of stories and then um, anecdotes uh, introductions to each of those stories by Stan Lee uh, so just kind of need to see some of those you get these collector's editions and these are if I remember correctly these are the treasuries that I've seen at different cons I have a few of these treasuries for Marvel certainly the ones that uh, feature Jack Kirby's artwork but I have seen some of these art there and it's kind of neat because these were comics that I, I remember as a kid having a large gi joe uh, number one treasury edition and never really got into any of this dc ones but certainly into the marvel ones and i know that i've got like the 2001 uh the bicentennial battles for sure this fantastic four and it's just amazing to see some of the artwork buscema kirby 
at that large scale. It, it just prints beautifully. Uh, the color is just amazing. And you can buy them through this catalog, along with some coloring books. Again, you just put in your order, send it away, and you can even get your Super Baby Rag Dolls. Got, gotta love it. All right, so let's go into another one here. And this is issue four. Previous one was number one. And these I just found, again, just digging through back issue box. Uh, you know, I think they were like a dollar each. And just because they were that interesting to me, I picked them up. Look at this. Get an uh, advertisement for the art of Neil Adams. Pretty amazing. Get a number of different Spider-Man toys from, looks like, a radio remote control car. A web shooter of some sort, uh, maybe like Amigo Green Goblin figure, Spider Copter, of course. A lot of Spider Man merchandise here on display. But look at this Star Wars. I mean, uh, Superhero Enterprises was not slacking. They were going and getting the licenses for everything that a kid in the late 70s would want. The Micronauts, love this. And then you have. A description here of some of the characters and the cost so you can get your own Baron Karza, Andromeda playsets, Galactic Goodies Starfleet. Not familiar with this one, but even these guys over here kind of remind me of those. Uh, yeah, there we go. It is Shogun Warriors. That's exactly what I thought. Every once in a while, I see those at cons, and I didn't have any as a kid. Uh, cousins uh, that uh, for sure had them, but I always really was envious because those things were were massive and if you look at the price tag on some of those now price tag is pretty massive too so we went from spider-man to star uh, star wars to now batman where you can get speedboat grappling hook radio remote controlled batmobile kiss meagle dolls previous issue we'd seen the hall of justice now we see hall of justice and the fortress of solitude these 12 inch action dolls and pretty interesting combination here because you've got Wonder Woman, but Steve Trevor, Jor-El, Luther, uh, pretty, pretty interesting. And again, the best part about some of this is that you're seeing actual artwork drawn by students at the Joe Kubert School of Comics Art. So I don't know, it just feels a little bit more elevated to me because it's in a comics format. It feels, it smells like a comic book and then to be able to actually see comic book artwork um, makes it a little, I don't know, a little bit more interesting than just flipping through like a Toys R Us catalog, which again is pretty neat on its own. But I don't know. There's just something neat about this because then you get to see patches, uh, you know, you get Starfleet emblems and then Howard the Duck, a uh, Power Man. I mean, what kid was walking around with a Power Man patch in the late seventies? Well, probably whoever ordered it from here, you get a bunch of stamps, banks, those, uh, were made out of kind of like that plastic blow that I think they would use like air. It was very thin, easy to break, but hey, for $2.98 with $0.50 cents, uh, for shipping and handling, you can put all your loose change in Spider-Man's head. A few more toys. If you wanted to have a Hulk-themed uh, tea party, there you go. Uh, Spider-Man as well. It looks like you could get the amazing spider van because of course we all know spider-man for his van or a bedroom set uh you get a ton of lamps alarm clocks you know i will say that's kind of neat uh you get uh, superman coming out of a phone booth but again you're buying this uh you're ordering this and you're just hoping that this very in some cases rudimentary drawing is going to be enough to get you excited to want to drop down Fourteen ninety five plus one shipping, uh, one fifty for shipping and handling for this Batman lamp, and uh, there's not a lot going there. You're just hoping that it's a good figure that you're actually getting it. Um, so uh, that's what Superhero Enterprises was doing uh, by the early 1980s. Uh, they actually were renamed to to uh, Heroes World. I think if I remember correctly, Mego had a trademark on the word superhero and Marvel and DC bought that from Mego so that they now own a joint trademark of the word superhero. So then superhero enterprise had to be renamed, became heroes world, uh, wound up having 12 locations. Uh, they became a legit mail order comic distribution operation. 
and the reason why uh, they worked with the Joe Kubert School of Art is because Joe Kubert School was close to New Jersey, to the hub, uh, to the headquarters of Heroes World. So th that's where you get some of this uh, amazing artwork. And again, you get a little bit of everything here. You get Hulk, you get Conan. And uh, on some of these, I have to imagine they're just reproducing existing artwork. I'm sure there was a Buscema poster for Conan. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, it looks like even some Frazetta style artwork over here. Yeah, there we go. Frazetta, Snow Giants, the Berserker, the Barbarian. So it's showcasing a ton of different artists of, of different licenses all under one 50 cents catalog. Um, you even get this uh, collection here. Let's see here. A bunch of calendars that I remember as the cover from that. Jack Kirby Stanley uh, Silver Surfer graphic novel um, that I think was later painted, but uh, that that rings a bell. Get different magazines, and this is probably about the time I think where you had Marvel also doing those black and white Conan magazines that Buscema contributed to. Look at this: some art books, art of Frank Thorne uh, featuring Red Sonia. So, so much underneath uh in between these covers and i don't know if if you didn't have enough money to buy an issue of star wars of spider-man of conan um i i can just imagine as a kid buying this and maybe never actually placing your order but being able to see all of this stuff that you would want uh you know in, in one catalog so pretty neat again like i said a little bit of an oddity uh, if I ever run into any of the other issues, I would certainly pick them up just because, again, it's kind of neat to flip through this and see so many of these uh, different licenses under under one saddle stitched uh, cover. But just neat also the fact that you're not just looking at photos, you're looking at artwork, artwork by uh, would be comic book artists. I'm sure some of them became comic book artists. And for that alone, uh, it's well worth uh, checking out. So. Thanks for uh, checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed it.